Peru's capital, Lima, is the second largest desert city in the world. Although the region enjoys a surplus of water during the rainy season, keeping it is a problem. Excess water is often lost to the ocean, leaving Lima's 9 million residents without a regular supply during the dry winter months. I'm Juliana Schatz in Peru to see how restoring a system of stone canals built in the Andes over a thousand years ago may help keep water flowing to the country's capital. In the next five to 20 years, if nothing is done, Lima will be on the brink of deep hydric stress. Its growing population and the effects of climate change mean that demand is outweighing supply. The shanty towns built on the periphery of Lima feel the effects of the water scarcity most severely. In theory, annual rainfall is sufficient to meet the demands of the water consumers in the city, but local groups are scrambling to find a way to ration this water. One of those groups is Condesan, who are using thousand-year-old technology to delay the flow of water at the source, high in the peaks of the Andes Mountains. Oscar from Condesan took us high up in the Andes to a little town called Huamantanga, where the ancient canals are being restored. Hola. ¿Cómo estás? This is Victor. He knows a ton about this area. He's from here. And he and his horses are going to take us all the way to the top to check out the canals. The ancient stone canals had largely been forgotten. But some years ago, the effects of climate change affected the rainy seasons, which turned shorter but more violent, creating a problem for Huamantanga's agriculture, the town's main source of income. And it was the oldest comuneros, or community members, who remembered how the canals worked. When we came here, we tried to solve their concern with these kind of canals. They knew these kind of systems it worked before. Yeah. And said, OK, let's restore it. it. This restored canal is being used as a pilot site to demonstrate the benefits of infiltration. During the rainy season, it captures large quantities of water from the rivers in the mountains. As the bottom of the canal is porous, the water filters directly into the ground and runs into springs and natural reservoirs further down the mountain, maintaining river flow during the dry season. In turn, the violent flows of water that occur after the rainy seasons will be reduced, and there will be less water wasted into the ocean. La gente antigua, los abuelos, nuestros ancestros, aprovechaban todos los recursos que teníamos. La sabiduría de los mamanteos, esos son los que nos han dejado hasta la actualidad. Condesan is continuing to test the effectiveness of these canals by injecting fluorescent dye into the canal's flow upstream to determine the place where this water will resurface. And this right here is what we call a nojo de agua, right? Exactly. It's like an eye of water okay. between different rocks, and it's where the water is going to resurface, it's going to reappear again. So what are we doing here right now? We set up this active uh, carbon, uh, this okay. active carbon has the property to absorb the fluorescent dye. What does the dye going through the carbon tell you? If we don't have any dye here, it means that canal doesn't fit this ojo de agua. And like this stream, like this ojo de agua, we set up like seven different active carbons in different parts of the, of the territory of Huamantanga. I've come to Huaraz to visit the Pastures Conservation Project which is another initiative aimed at controlling the flow of water to the lowlands more effectively. So I'm meeting Junior today here in Huaraz. We're going up to the highlands to check out some of the pastures they've been preserving over the last five years. Hola. ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo estás? ¿Cómo estás? Bien, ¿qué tal? Bien. Bienvenida a Huaraz. We've come to meet Clemente, a farmer who has single-handedly transformed his immediate environment from barren, useless land to rich pastures which help regulate the flow of water into the ground. Buenos días, ¿cómo estás? Bien, bien, bien. Clemente. Clemente, yo soy Juliana. Todos estos pastos, ¿cuánto tiempo los has cuidado? 45 años tengo esto. 
cuenta. Apenas. Yeah, <risa> 40, Apenas, 45 años. <risa> Acá la semilla puedo sacar. Ajá, mostramos. Esta es la semilla. Ah, este, este a ver. Tiene fruto adentro. ¿Y esto es lo que usas para este, sembrar más pasto? Sí, sí, sí. Acá hay fruto. Sí, ayuda el pasto, pues, uh, Juliana, este... Filtra el agua y no, no corre corrientales. Uh -huh. Acá sí. adentro nomás subsuelo, entra agua. El clima está cambiando porque está haciendo mucho calor y mucho frío. Para no aguantar. Antes no era así cuando era joven. Antes era hielo regular, pero ahora se ha bajado por mitad, más de mitad ya se ha ido. All of this land was barren before. These grasslands did not exist. This right here is really the fruit of his labor. Just have a look at this. I mean, look at how amazing this all looks now. And Junior has been monitoring the effects that Clemente's pastures have produced, measuring how much rainwater has been stored in the highland soils. Quiero mostrarte un pequeño ejemplo de cómo este, la lluvia que cae en, en los pastos filtra a través del suelo. Cuando no hay mucha lluvia, esta, eh, el agua que está saturado dentro del suelo comienza a salir poco a poco y eso hace que el caudal no disminuya, no desaparezca y la comunidad aguas abajo podría tener mayor cantidad de agua. Walking amongst the clouds, it seems to me the solutions to current environmental problems do not rest on expensive and modern technologies, but on the tried and tested methods of Peru's people. Returning to ancient techniques could help guarantee running water for millions of people living today.